Do you guys feel that I'm very nervous now? Yes. Well, if you do, you're stereotyping me. But don't worry, you're not alone. Here are some stereotypes, common stereotypes that you will see on the internet, hear from your peers or family. It's just the tip of the iceberg, but do you ever wonder why? Why would people give other labels and stereotypes? It could be because of how they feel superior from their education, their upbringings, or their experiences. And because of that, they give opinions and judgments on people from one perspective. And that one, pers one perspective, that one side they see about you, they think it's everything about you. But do they ever think, how would the victim feel? If you were the victim, how would you feel? If I was the victim, I will feel hurt, helpless. I wouldn't do what I wouldn't know what to do. And in in the worst situation, I will feel bullied, discriminated, and traumatized. And that I then and that is actually how I felt from what I've gone through. And here's my story about all the stereotypes that I've received until today and how I have overcame them. I have moved to an international school at the age of 10. My English wasn't good back then and often holded our team back during group work. And because of that, I was being blamed and judged, targeted to be laughed at. They judged the way, on the way I dress, how I look, and the K-pop idols that I adore was in the mainstream, so I was also being laughed at. Until I went to high school, I realized I see people respecting each other. No one was criticized, there were barely judgments. And it was the environment that taught me that everyone should be equal. No one should be criticized. We should stand up and speak up for ourselves. And that is an important lesson for us to know, to break stereotypes. But I didn't know back then. So when I was back in the middle school, I kept silence. I choose to not take any actions and that shaped my personality till now. But later on, I understand my own stereotypes, and I changed. So I started to explore stereotypes around me, and I found out that the idols that I adore had, had also a form of stereotype. So before I continue, a question. What are ideal idols for you guys? Do they have to be skinny, pretty, Handsome, good at singing, dancing, performing, perfect, or whatever. Do you ever expect an idol to do volunteer work? So here are more pictures. Do you think this and this look similar? Perhaps no. But they are. It actually is the same person. I believe that you'll never expect that someone like him, an idol, shining on stage would go collect garbage. But they do. They're humans just like us, much more than a singer, dancer, or an actor. This Korean singer is a member of the group NCT. His name is Jimin, and his glamour on stage, caring for others, and optimism towards the future attracted me. And he was also the one who made me move on, to for, move on forward and to things that I should be concerned with more. Later on, I spent more time researching on him. And I found out that he went to Vietnam to support UNICEF, to help kids learn more about music, and also went to Indonesia to collect garbage, as that's the previous picture showed. And later on, I also went to his fan sign event and called him and spoke to him. That's me on the top, top right. You can see me. And before I communicated with him, and I realized that if I had communicated with him earlier, I wouldn't even label him as just a simple singer or an idol. He was much more than that. And there are more sides for us to see about them. And under his inspiration, I thought of my, I reflected on myself. Have I done anything meaningful? But no, because I was, 
very protective of myself from the bullies I received. But now I think it's time for me to step out of my comfort zone and try something and do something that I've never done and thought to do in my life before. So now under his inspiration, I volunteer at the school in Beijing for mainly for students whose parents came to Beijing for work. And the school also supports them with tuition fees, offering every student equal education. When I first arrived at the school, my first impression was, wow, it just felt like my old elementary school. But there was this one difference I captured. They had dorms. And in the dorms, there were no air conditioners, no outlets, but only one fan on the ceiling. When the weather was 40 degrees hot outside, it was so much hotter than Shanghai today. Can you imagine? The heat was unbearable, and I wanted to go home immediately. But wait, am I stereotyping myself again? Thinking that because of, just because of the heat, I can't get through the 14 days. We unconsciously fell into the traps of stereotyping each other, other people, and even ourselves. But in fact, there is so much more about ourselves and other people to see. So in the moment I was backing out, my only savior mom called over and she gave me the one and only best advice. Just go to bed, sleep, and do not think about the heat. And that's what I did and it actually worked and helped. Until the next day when I went to the classroom, I saw kids that were so passionate and excited for the upcoming events. I was surprised and I doubted myself and com when I compared their passion to my complaints, I realized that I had something to learn from them. And while everyone else, every other student was so passionate, I saw this one kid was specifically silent, kept silence and was unwilling to talk to anyone. He had his head buried into his arms and I wondered why, so I went up to him and I asked, are you okay? Do you feel ill? But he never replied or even looked at me until this kid beside him told me that he was homesick and I resonated with him because I've been, to th been through the same stage of homesick, went to school alone. So now, after all my experience, I concluded three tips and I used these three tips to help him to break the stereotypes that he made for the school. So number one, I went to understand his stereotypes. He labeled the school as a place for learning only. So I tried to break that and I told him that yes, summer schools are places for learning, but it could be also full of joy. There's so many other possible things that you can do at a summer school. And number two, communicate with him. Since he was homesick and he misses home, I spent more time accompanying him, spending lunch and dinner sitting with him, and we chatted about my family, his family, about his school, my school, what have we done every day, and before coming to the summer school, what do I do, what do I like, to make up his emptiness, and that actually helped. Number three, taking up practical actions. So since some families are strict with um, electronics, we volunteers came up with the idea of using our phones for them to call home. So at the end of each day, they all got a chance to call home. And when that kid called home, I, for the first time, I saw him smile. I was impressed. And the next day, we had to travel outside school and break up into smaller groups. And he came up to me and asked me to be his supervisor. I was surprised because I know that was a sign of accepting me. And after this, after this camp, I reflected on myself and understood that I could also be someone influential. Because before this, I labeled myself as an ordinary person, useless, someone who, who will make no influence on other people. But now, I know that I could also be a role of a guide. I could help them. I can use my power to help them. And now, from that, I noticed that there were two main problems for um, stereotyping. So number one, the lack of communication. And number two, 
of the assumptions we make about other people. So again, the three tips. Number one, fit yourself into other people's shoes and positions. Resonate with them. Number two, communicate. Listen to them. It, that is the key. Communication is the key. Number three, take some actions. So before my speech, you guys might also stereotype me or label me as something else. And now, what do you think about me again? Thank you.